My name is Philip Tan. I've been a DJ for about 30 years. I then grew up here, but my first gig in the US right, was uh, right across there in um, East Campus. And this is DJ History, Technique and Technology. I'm super glad all of you are here today. Here's the thing I want you to take away from just today's session. I want you to be able to get a good sense of what the workload is like, what the actual course material is like. I want you to actually figure out if this is a thing that you can commit to. I am expecting people to show up for pretty much every single class session. Now, if you're sick, obviously don't. If you've hurt yourself, you need a break, do email me ahead of time. I'm very lenient in sort of giving time off uh, as long as you let me know ahead of time. And in some cases, I understand you have to let me know after the, the, the situation. Just don't let me wonder where the heck you are. Everyone also gets four free absences. So, you know, you've got a job interview or something, you know, you've got a sports event that you need to go to. I would appreciate if you just tell me that you're not going to be there. What I would like you to take away from the overall course is some appreciation for what DJs actually do, what the work is like, what the craft is like, um, especially DJs of other genres, multiple genres. So that when you're actually at a party, um, when you're at an event where there is a DJ, um, you can actually recognize a DJ who's actually putting in the work and trying to entertain you and the ones who are literally phoning it in, right? They've got their phone out. I want you to be able to tell the difference between a DJ who is messing up because they don't care or a DJ who's messing up because they're trying really hard and appreciating the latter, right? I want, and I want you to enjoy your favorite DJs and find more DJs that, 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 that you enjoy listening to and appreciate what it is that they do. Some of you may, at the end of this, decide to become DJs. Some of you already are. And we'll teach you technique. You will learn some technique. And um, hopefully, you actually have a chance to actually perform some of that before the semester is over. That's not everyone's cup of tea. Not everybody is like feels motivated by that. When I get to the assignments, I'll talk about some alternative approaches that you can take towards this class and still get a good grade. Right at the beginning, I'm going to be talking mostly about just music. You see all this technology you see in front of you? We're not even going to get to that for the first four, four or five classes or, 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 or so. We are actually just going to be talking about the music. I have seen DJs rock parties with nothing but a phone running iTunes. And I've seen DJs with high-end gear, uh, the most expensive $10,000 equipment, um, just completely ignore what the audience actually enjoys or is not enjoying, and um, just doing whatever the heck they want masterfully and um, not entertaining a single person in, in a club. But there's a difference, again, between a DJ who's genuinely trying to entertain and failing uh, and you can sort of sympathize with, with, with them, or if you don't yet, maybe by the end of this semester you will. And the DJ who really just doesn't care about what anyone thinks of the music that's being played. So the first four or five weeks, we're actually just going to look at you understanding the music that you want to play. All right? We're going to be alternating Mondays and Wednesdays between certain dance cultures of music, and the techniques that were introduced to be able to DJ those techniques. We're going to understand who's actually dancing to this music. What does this music sound like? How did it change over a couple of decades? Um, and understand what is in that music that actually allows you to mix them in a certain way. All of these techniques aren't unique to a specific genre of music. The stuff that you learn for soul, for rock, for reggae, for salsa, uh, all of that is applicable for any other genre of music going forward. But some of these genres of music were kind of invented later, and the technologies that were available to those DJs who made those genres popular changed o over time. So they started mixing differently. That becomes part of the sound of that particular genre. I'm hoping that a lot of you are interested in sort of pushing the envelope, finding new ways to do things, keeping an open mind about what DJing actually is, and, um, and being flexible about how you can achieve a certain musical goal. I will be teaching many of the same concepts over and over and over again, 
in different ways, hoping that one of those ways clicks with you. And if it doesn't quite click, let me know, and we'll try doing it a different way, because we have a whole range of different technology and different approaches to accomplish that goal. You need to find a way that works for you. Assignment one, I, I've got like a good stack of about 25 books that you can pick. And all I want you to do is read about 100 pages. You get to pick which 100 pages. 100 pages of these books is about a third of those books. You get to figure out which chapters you are interested in. I've, I've, I've read all of those books. I have never made it through any of them. <laughs> so I'm letting you choose which chapters you want to read. What I do want you to do is write five pages, basically just summarizing that. That's one thing that you need to argue. You've got to argue for one of those chapters being something that other people should be reading. All right, I want you to go through these books and find one chapter that's actually like, this is a big takeaway. This is the thing that surprised me. This is the thing I didn't know. This is the thing that other people should know. You should not be quoting any text directly from the book. I am um, going to be grading based on how easy it is for me to read. If, you've give, if you give me five pages of nothing but bullet points, you are not getting a good grade. I expect pros. Um, you know, spell checked, gra grammatically correct prose. Run a spell checker, please. The claims that you make in your paper should be the claims that the book is making. You don't have to agree with them. I will dock grades if you're late. And I do want you to get it in before spring break so that you don't have to worry about this class during spring break. Assignment two, everyone's got to do a 15 minute recording. This could be audio only, this could be video. Um, if you're going to do a DJ mix, which is probably the most obvious way to, to finish this assignment, just do a 15 minute DJ mix, and audio recording is just fine. Add a, um, a text document, a PDF document, that just lists all the songs that you played. You know? It'd be nice to be able to have an extra line of the, this is the technique that I was working on, or this is a UK garage mix, right? You know, UK garage mix, because it's UK. <laughs> Just a UK garage mix spanning music from 1995 to uh, 2000 or something like that, you know? Um, that's, that's all the information I really need. I want to know what it is that you were going for. I want you to find cultures of music that actually excite you that, you, that you actually want to investigate. What I'm going to do after the class is over is I'm going to start uploading them to the internet. So it's not just the people in this class, people outside of this class, I do have a few fans, they are going to hear it, and this is my only incentive for you to try to do a good job, right? Because if you hand me a bad mix, but you hand it to me on time, and it's about 15 minutes long, and you give me that PDF, I'm giving you full, full credit for that assignment, even if the mix itself is terrible. <laughs> But people are going to hear that mix. And your name's going to be on it. All right? Some of you might use that mix to prepare for assignment three. If you are doing, ass if, if assignment three is I, you, you are going to be up there on stage. And by the time you s you're halfway through assignment two, you will know where, uh, what your role is for assignment three. You may um, realize, oh man, you know, I've signed up to do this peak hour set. And... Uh, I better start preparing my music for it. You can use assignment two to prepare for assignment three. You're still gonna have to do assignment three live. Um, so, you know, it's still, it's still work for, uh, for, for you e either way, but you can be clever about it, all right? You should know what you're mixing, all right? So you know, don't, don't tell me that you're doing a disco mix when it's actually a house mix. That will be a very easy mistake to make, for instance. And if you don't know the difference, we'll get to that in this semester. Audio quality matters. If you give me a mix that's full of YouTube rips, I'm going to be able to hear it because I have good speakers at home. <laughs> and uh, it's going to sound like crap and I'm going to wonder why. Because did you mess up your recording in one way or another? Because I'll be teaching you how to make a good recording. Your source files are going to affect that. Now, very quickly throughout, the alternative is you make a 15-minute video presentation. Uh, you, you can do it in Zoom. Just hit record in Zoom. Send me the file. Um, that presentation should be about some sort of dance culture. Um, so if you say, 
man, Philip did not cover enough about soca music, for instance. I, there really should be 15 minutes of drum and bass knowledge in this class. Then, okay, you can do that instead. You can just say, I'm going to make a 15 minute PowerPoint. You do the research, you, know, you, you, you look up your sources, find audio clips, find video clips, um, if necessary, you don't have to, PowerPoint is fine. And you give me a 15 minute presentation recorded on video um, of you just talking over your slides. The second half of the semester, we're actually going to throw an event. Where is this event? When is the, this event? What kind of event it is? I don't know yet. I'm hoping that you will actually help me figure that out. Everybody gets an hour. Well, you know, <laughs> it's going to be like a 25 hour event. It could be a multi group event, actually, now I think about it. Um, we could do something like a sound clash, uh, where we actually have a competitive event where everybody has to like, get so a sound system from somewhere and actually go up against another crew. So we split the class up into crews and then we make it competitive. We can make it a DJ battle. Uh, we could make something much more collaborative. Not everybody has to DJ at that final event. In fact, very unlikely that everyone's going to DJ at that final event. What I'm hoping is that the people who are really motivated to actually DJ in front of an audience will get an opportunity to do so, and the people who don't want at any cost to be in front of an audience will be able to contribute some other way. Making flyers, promoting it, running, you know, uh, keeping an eye on the sound system, removing all the drinks from the sound system because you know, it's going to spill and make a mess. All of these things are involved in actually running an event. DJs are sometimes seen as the center of attention, but they don't make events happen on their own. They need collaborators. They need people doing a whole lot of other things in order to be able to make a truly good event occur. And so vaguely, the last week of classes, you know, it may not be the actual Monday, but I have it there. Um, so either, either we'll actually have the event on a Monday, or we will have no class that day, and, you'll, you, and, and we'll have the, the event someday that week. This is, this, is, this is the week right before finals. You really only need to participate. If you completely mess, if you're DJing for the entire crowd, and you completely mess up, you're not going to fail the class because of that. That happens. Um, in fact, you'll probably learn more from doing that than you know, playing a perfect set. Uh, my understanding for music concentrators and music majors, you, gotta, you just to got, got to talk to your advisors. You've got a copy of the syllabus now, just hop over to Canvas and you can download this as a PDF. My understanding is that the music concentration advisors already know about this class and they've been letting people just count it towards their concentration. So, but make sure that you've got their sign off. It doesn't count unless they say yes. This class technically doesn't have automatic has credit. Email your advisors. If, if, if they're good with, with, with it, if they need anything from, from, from me, just, just let me know, okay? Um, and uh, I'll happily uh, sign anything that, that, that needs to be signed off to meet your degree requirements.